talk about the outwaters, Uncle Bill. Not really, but I mean, if we must. It was requested from our good friend, William, a.k.a. DeMile. He is one of the ballers and shot callers. And a special shout out to him because I know that he's had a rough month, month and a half or so. We hadn't heard from him. This is actually August request that he had sent in. So hope everything's going better for you, pal. And uh, The Outwaters is not a movie that made me feel any better, though. I've got to be honest with you. Um, this was a screen box original and it was presented by bloody disgusting. So that alone should tell you what kind of movie you're in for. Uh, well, here's the thing, like bloody disgusting did, um, terrifier too. I mean, in terms of like produced it and everything. So what about screen box? <laughs> what in the hell have they done? I don't know. I don't know a lot about screen box to be honest, but isn't that their like streaming service or whatever? Like bloody disgustings. I'm not really sure exactly what in hell Screenbox even is. I know it was like a one of those subscription services, but now like well, they have the different releases I, that are out just random spots from what I understand. So the only I way I know about it is because Terrifier 2 was out on it for a while, and that was like the only spot you could see Terrifier 2. So I think that that's somehow or another like Blood Disgusting does something with that. Try to get it going like Shudder or something, but I don't think they succeeded. Anyway, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of faith in anything that those when fuckers I, are. I was like, I was going to IMDb and just read like the cast and the, you know, the director and everything. And I would have bet the bank on this being an Australian horror movie because the guys, the director's name just sounds very Australian. <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> Robbie Van Fitch. I might Robbie Van Fitch. But anyway. Robbie Banfitch is actually from New Jersey, evidently. I never oh. thought. You know, it's like we thought James Jude Courtney was a bloke as well, but he's not. That's he's from like he's... South Carolina. Yep. It but does anyway, have it... a musical score by Salem Belladonna, though. I don't know if you were aware of that. Is that Joey Belladonna's daughter? It is, yeah. I just kind of guess there's not too many people last name Belladonna. I actually don't know, but it's Salem, <laughs> Salem Belladonna. Hello, I'm Hello, Hello. Uh, So anyway, this movie, let's just, I'll just get into the basic plot of it, all right? Yeah. So it opens up with like, I don't know what the hell is going on, but it opens up with like a 911 phone call where like people are just screaming. And that's one thing about this movie that really irritated the fuck out of me because I like, there's always noise going on constantly. Like, there's some sort of background noise, like, all the way through the movie, except for maybe the first 10 minutes. And, like, at the beginning of it, it's just pure chaos. And, like, I think somebody even references this as, like, panic horror, where, like, the whole, like, idea behind the movie is just chaos and panic. And, like, it's just, and it is like that. And it's very, very annoying. But anyway, there's a 911 call, and this group of people are, like, uh, screaming and hollering and going on and shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what was like, my, 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 yeah, my name is Caleb. My name is Caleb. I've, I've got a phone up my ass. Just random stuff that they're saying. And uh, then it just like, there's a title card that explains that like all kinds of like craziness happened. And these four people went missing in the desert. And then they found their um, smart cards, memory cards from their uh, cameras. And apparently... From what I can gather from trying to like pay attention to this movie, uh, well, they found one of them inside a severed dick hole, right? That's right. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there was an investigation and lots of traps. But uh, from what I understand, they went out to shoot a music video in the desert. Yeah. The, group... the blonde was the singer, right? And she was right. trying to boost her career by doing like a music video. In the Mojave Desert with her buddies. They go out in the desert and they set up camp. And then at some point they start to hear all these weird kind of commotions and sounds and shit. And they go and do what you're not supposed to do, which is investigate that shit. And at that point, it goes from being like a pretty straightforward, um, you know, linear kind of story. One thing, too, though, 
to get to that point is 20 minutes. There's 20 minutes that goes by yeah. of absolutely nothing. Like, yep. I mean, truthfully, it does look like just random camera footage that they would have shot with their family or whatever else. There's no point to have that in there. So you're 20 minutes, even before you get to whatever the plot of the movie is starting to, if there is a plot, the point of the movie is starting to be, I guess. Well, it's an hour and 50 minutes long, man, which is way too fucking long for this type of movie. Like, yeah. And, you know, I, before I even went on IMDb and looked it up or anything like that, I, I texted you and I was like, this is like fucking the found footage version of Skin and Marie. So I go on like IMDb and the very first comment is like, it's the found footage version of Skin and Marie. I'm like, yeah. Like, I mean, well, to be fair, it's got more better visuals. I mean, it's at least got some cool stuff to look at from time to time. But it, but it's like once you get into the actual um, crazy part of the movie, which is the the longest part of the movie, right? Yeah. You're looking at shit from like a a flashlight. So like everything you see for about forty five minutes is just like you stuff that you can just scan like a by looking at like a, a spotlight or a flashlight. Like how fucking annoying and just aggravating is that to think about? Like well and whatever it is, I mean it said like on uh, IMDB is trivia like that the director Robbie Banfitch was hugely influenced by, by the Blair Witch project. No fucking shit. You no think? shit. This is basically the Blair Witch Project in damn desert. But yeah, 30 minutes but, longer or whatever. I mean, it reminded me of like they put like if you took Skin and Marink, the Blair Witch Project, and then the last part of Event Horizon and like, threw it all together. Yeah. That's kind of what this movie is. Yeah, so all kinds just, of bizarre sounds that they start to hear. All the sounds pretty much come at night. And there's some hallucinating going on too, which I mean, it, it is kind of odd. I'll give them credit. You know, parts of the movie is very bizarre and strange. It's there's aspects of this movie that you really haven't seen done exactly like that before, but Jesus Christ, man, like why in the hell does this movie need to be two hours long? It's too much. It's too like, it's overkill on the senses really because, and I promise you like when it gets into the stuff where it, it, it shifts into a movie where it's like a dream, you know, nightmare kind of chaos kind of thing where this guy is just kind of like walking around trying to find out like what happened and like what happened to his friends and all this stuff. And like, he keeps seeing people like covered in blood and like running away from him, running towards him. Creatures like little worm creatures hanging then, on to the camera the entire time too. Yeah, I mean, that's, while, that's hardcore filmmaking right there. While all this is going on though, there's always noise. Like it's either like somebody reciting like a prayer or like so somebody you can't talking. Make out what the hell it is? Yeah, yeah, it's just like constant talking and noise. Like while it's so I, I guess the point of it was to try to like just throw you off and make you uncomfortable. But to me, I just wanted to turn it the fuck off. Like it's just too much. And it's there's strobe lights and stuff like constantly. Yeah, Christmas lights. <laughs> it's like being in a haunted house with a recorder shoved up your ass. Or so something. that's like what it yeah, reminds me of. Towards the end, you kind of figure out what's going on a little bit. I guess you start hearing these things and then you, like he said, event horizon. So it's alien related in the desert and all that. Um, and towards the end of the movie too, like, and I'm pretty sure that the guy, the guy wouldn't be able to stumble around the desert with his fucking guts hanging out of his body, dragging on the ground. He's still walking. Oh God, what am I going to do? I'm in a lot of trouble guys. I'm, not, I'm never going to be able to shit right again. Gotta shit out his bowels. Uh oh. um but man yeah i mean there's a reason like i hadn't heard anybody talk about this movie before had you no but here's the really weird thing when i went to research it and everything it's got like almost universal critical praise like from big name like you know 
newspapers and magazines and stuff, like critically, there's a lot of critics, critics. And let's differentiate that because like almost all of the audience. IMDb has uh, got like 4.0 yeah, out of 10, I think. Almost all, almost all the audience kind of votes for it were like ones and zeros. But like critically, it was like getting way, way up there. Almost like 76% like positive. Yeah. And I, I don't understand. Like, I mean, I, I would kind of understand, but I, I just can't imagine like watching this and being, I, I mean, it'll make you uncomfortable, but like, so would like being in a dentist chair while a fucking disco light was going on, which is kind of what this is like. Like, I think that this movie would work a lot better if it was like 75, 80 minutes long. For one thing, like, I don't know what it is about younger filmmakers of this era. They all want to be like fucking Christopher Nolan or something and make these epic long ass movies. Dude, a horror movie, 90% of all horror movies have no need in being longer than 90 minutes at all. Yeah. That should be the, the, the limit on them. And this one, uh, the opening 20 minutes could have easily just been dropped. There was no point for that shit at all. There was nothing. You know, you're getting to know the characters that you never fucking see. You don't even see them fucking. No. Never again do you see them. Yeah. No. Unless they're covered in so much like fake blood that you can't even like differentiate what the fuck's going on. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the Outwaters. 2022 movie. No good, boys. No good. Dumal, William, we appreciate the recommendation. And you always have interesting movies and concepts, most of the time that we've never, ever heard of. So I, I appreciate it. But yeah, they, this one was not for me at all. I, I See, here's the weird thing about this, too. I can kind of understand... Maybe uh, more so with this movie than Skin and Marink. Like, why people would like this. Because it is, like, really um, uncomfortable and very, like, discombobulating, if I can use that word. Like, and I'm I imagine... that five times fast, though. Yeah. I imagine, like, if you saw it in a theater, it would be, like, a whole other type of that experience, too. Because, like I said, there's just constantly some sort of sensory stuff going on, like strobe lights music talking like screaming creature exactly. sounds just yeah but i i just didn't like it because it's just there's too much shit and i i can't i'm sorry but i'm old school i can't stand watching a movie through a fucking hole like that big like that's all you saw it's like watching a movie through somebody's asshole or something like on the other side but it's it's one thing to be influenced by a movie like Blair Witch, but you basically remade the movie and just changed locations and made it way, way, way worse. Yeah. There is an interesting idea behind there, though, which is they stumbled upon like a government military testing area, like some sort of like, which you would assume like some sort of alternate reality or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. Like to have like, that would have been cool. I mean, had they ended the movie and he found out it was like 1940 or something. Yeah. Sent him back in time. Yeah. But the uh, outwater the of this movie, he just cuts his dick off and then he disembowels himself. So and starts playing with his dick, his severed dick in the fucking desert. He's like grabbing it and touching. It. It's like, oh, that's a dick, but it ain't on. Uh, I'm fucking crazy now. Never again will I hold that Peter and be. Oh, I'm just going to use it as a paperweight. Fuck it. And they they did that primarily out of shock value, right? To be like, oh, God, that's a He cut his dick off. He cut his own dick off now. But uh, I was shocked finally when the fucking thing was over with. Because I was like, God damn, bulls. I kept looking at the time left on it. And it was like 34 minutes left. And I was like, God <laughs> damn. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, and it's, it's, it, there's not like there's any plot or anything going on. It's just like a guy with a ah! fucking camera running around, like filming shit. My name shaking. is Ralph. My name is Ralph. I'm Ralph. <laughs> this is real. Yeah. So the, uh, 
Outwaters is out. Now, let me tell you something else that's fucking aggravating too, Uncle Bill. I watched this on Plex for free. But you know what? It ain't totally for free because every fucking 15 minutes, there's uh, five minutes of commercials. So that made it almost two and a half hours for my ass to watch it. Oh my God. Give us the thumbs up. Off you butts. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a if you do. I don't. want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to touch nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you dare yeah. touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at Shop dot deadpit dot com simply the best horror shirts on t public there are others but they all suck you can get some dead pit radio shirts you can get last south on the left the hills have eyes texas chainsaw oh wait you can't say texas chainsaw all kinds of shirts folks you're gonna love them shop dot dead pit Dot com. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1.